on the left hand side of the map is going to be shot and the bullets the top lane we currently have Baylog and Olaf played by Ivy Slime Protégé on the bright wing Ivy Slime again on Eric Skylo on the ETC Hospital on the Valor and that skin is so cool shot it's going to be Tassada yep and so looking over here to Murloc Geniuses it actually will be Faye this time on the fall side, Keller Pillar will be on that Diablo. Kathan Muck will be playing on the Tronda. Joined with them will be Mad Timmy on the Uther. And all by her lonesome will be Echo on that Jaina. Yep, and this time around we're going to see the Vikings as a 5 in the top lane. Uh, as a 3, sorry, as a trio. Cawthon Luck and Cattle Pillar are just waiting here. Cattle Pillar is going to be beefy Diablo and take out that scouting drone. That ETC had just previously placed. We actually have two scouting drones yep. being taken for uh, shot on the bullets. Yep, so very interesting being picked up there. Both teams are just going to be able to. This is so much vision being able to use the scouting drones. I like it on the bright wing. Not too sure how much I like it on the ETC giving up that block. But on a team like this, you may not need it too too much. So we'll have to see how it goes out. Maybe they'll be able to use it very well. But they're going to go straight on the shot. Of course, it's probably the worst target for them to go to. Just dimensional shifts straight out of there, and they're actually going to look to another one, but the scouting drone will actually pick them out. It will indeed, as Protege is just throwing, well, spitting bananas at Cawthorn Luck there. Such a scary skin, the bright wing. Nice shot now. Yep, so getting in a bit of a duel with Cawthorn, but not too much is happening. It's just Caterpillar trying to get a gank off, but because of these scouting drones, he's finding it pretty hard. Yeah, but now they'll say I completely take that back with this room right here. It's going to be really nice. They're going to always be able to see him, but Protégé's just not taking too much damage, being that bright wing and having shot, able to use that shield onto them. It's just going to really keep them up, and it really takes out a lot of this um, room squad as they're actually just staying in this bottom lane. They're not really able to put too much pressure on the rest of the map. Yeah, they are going to go on to hospital this time, though, who, of course, is going to get the shields from both bright wing and Tassadar and just vault out of that one. That's quite a bit of damage actually gets traded back onto Echo and Caterpillar there. It's really hard for Caterpillar and Cawthorn to do anything. This bot lane of course has so much defense plus the scouting drones. The mid lane, scouting drone and it's an ETC. And this top lane, well they're Vikings and they can more or less escape anything. And even yep. if they were to get a kill it's just not worth it because the XP is so low. And there it is, Ivy Slime going over but that was such a small amount of XP, it hasn't really done anything. Oh, and the Scouting Drones is getting placed out. They're just really doing so much, and Caterpillar, they're just, they have to, Thon Luck and Caterpillar aren't able to do too much. The push coming down onto this bottom lane is just so heavy right now that if they leave it, they lose so much in terms of structures, and they just have to keep going back, which means that there's no real pressure anywhere else on the map. But as fate would have it, we do have the bottom tribute actually being the first one to spawn, so that's pretty lucky in terms of where it's going to come out. Yeah, but it looks like uh, the bullets are just going to try and push this tower down and get an advantage here. Shot trying to channel it. Mad Timmy comes down to stop him, however. As now we have Echo doing the same again. Mad Timmy's uh, Holy Light will be now off cooldown. Or Holy Radiance, sorry. Will be off cooldown so he can use that again. Uh, it's just a real, really about a poke war now and just getting the others to use spells. Yep, and this is where it becomes really annoying playing against the Vikings. Cat actually, it looks like we're going to have a jump onto Kathan Luck by ETC. Trying to zone him out, actually going to take out that healing ward straight away. But they're going to go straight into here. ETC taking a bit of damage, but they were able to secure that tribute and all that. They were indeed. So that is the first tribute of the game going over to the bullets. Level 4 talents are in. We have, of course, the amplified healing on Diablo when you have uh, Tarande and Uther alongside you. Spin to win on the Vikings. Pretty standard. Brightwing going for the protective shield. Nothing out of the ordinary anywhere, really. Yep. And Caterpillar Bay actually making their way to the top. Looks like they're just kind of abandoned bottom. I think it would be a little better. Bay was actually able to get down a good bit of these structures, but you know, as it would have it, you know, she's only up against two Vikings and not too much happened. They're actually going to fly down here. Looks like Faze is going to go ahead and bribe both of these siege camps. It's going to be a bit annoying for the rest of the team just to deal with these. We do have ETC moving, but as we do still have one of the Vikings in the mid lane, they're not going to lose too much soak here. 
Yeah, but it's a question of where, whether Mad Timmy realizes this or not. It's going to be a trade now for for four. This bot one's got taken. Echo has to back, so this tower should go down as well here. Still a push in this top lane. Not gone down just quite yet. Mad Timmy still sitting in that brush as we now see Skylog come into this top lane. Trying to get onto Faye there. They could have maybe engaged. Done a little bit of damage, but instead, both teams backing away because it's tribute time. Yep. And... Right now we just see Shot, Hospital, and Protoj just really pushing down. They're going to put a lot of pressure down onto the bottom one. They actually just may give it up. They just try to get some push as it's only one apiece right now. And looks like Mad Team is going to come out, going to force him off just a bit. But he can't really do too much to the rest of his team. He's actually going to take a bit of damage trying to get behind that wall. Yeah, Mad Timmy just trying to go on to hospital here getting a stun off they will lose one of their keep towers already so early on as now we're seeing the roam come down it's going to be three versus three for a little bit echoes joining as is skylaw they could just engage upon echo here yep yeah, it looks like they're going to go straight on the skylaw echo taking actually a lot of damage is trying to get out about only one bar left it's going to have to be really careful what he does it's going to get healed up by both mad timmy and kathon like that double healing coming out really clutch in that moment they're going to be able to pick up the jet fighter going down and a 1 for 0 in favor, well 1.25 in favor of the side of Murloc Geniuses will help them out. Looks like Bay is about to be able to push down this top fort. She'll be able to get it. But Protégé, where are you going? Oh, okay, they just hit 10 and he got the blink kill just in time there. A little bit scared for him. He looked like he was backing himself into a corner there, but... Mm. It was a good fight there for the Murlocs. It's pulled them back somewhat. They still haven't hit level 10. This would be a great time for the Bullets to try and engage here. Looks like um, Murloc Genius is kind of just going in. They're going to, luckily Brightwing is just going to stay out. They're not going to engage upon this. They don't have level 10 yet. They're just going to go ahead and give up this tribute. The scouting owl just barely missing, could have just delayed that just a bit, but as we see in the bottom, Proto Jason and Matt Timmy doing a bit of a support fight, going back and forth, not too much damage coming out from either, but we do have the face shift coming out, but it's going to be stunned up, so it might be a little bit bad for the side, actually it's not as looks like Shot in the Bulletary will pick up the kill on the Echo anyways. Yeah, they were, as uh, that is Echo going down and more XP goes in the favor of the Bullets. As uh, Hospital, looking like he wants to take this hard camp, will have the assistance of Shot. As uh, they can get some shields up, get some more AoE damage down, and Faye just still doing her thing in this top lane. Wave clearing, soaking XP, and soon to be pushing down this fort. Oh. Looks like there might be a little trouble as Echo has left the game. The asking for the pause has come out, but it doesn't look like it is needed, so the game will resume. And just right now, we're really looking to see what Murlocs can do to really just catch up there. Just a little bit, maybe about half a level behind. They might be able to get the kill on the Eric right here. It won't matter too much, besides the fact that the boat would be a little bit less if it decides to come out. But we do have an engage coming out from side. He might be able to get it, but he will get knocked away from the Diablo. But they're going to be able to get onto that Jada bot. Unfortunately, it will be taken down as the bots are not the smartest beings in the world, or bots can't be beings. But they will be able to take that down, unfortunately. You may have wanted that pause, but it doesn't really matter now, as the damage has been done. They're going to go straight onto these towers. Yeah, they should be able to get one of these. Echo did DC in the last game, but came back straight away. This time took a little bit longer. Unfortunately, Jaina did go down there. We, of course, have the Hinterland Blast. Pretty standard heroics there. And Hinterland Blast on Cursed Hollow, it's one of the best maps for it, because there are so many chokes around the... Um, around the tributes that you can really get a good one off and look at this push coming in for this bot lane everyone is down here but Eric they've got a tower they could move on and get this early keep and only now is the pause coming in while we wait for Echo to reconnect but it's been a uh, pretty close game so far back and forth yeah and it just really comes down to the team fights just you know going really back and forth who can catch out who in the end has been just the really determining factor I will take out, you know, you don't really count the Jaina bot getting caught out, so of course it's kind of hard to make them do what you want. Echo probably wouldn't have been caught out exactly like that in that situation, um, in my opinion. But when you look at the kills, we did have the kill, you know, against, um, I do believe it was Echo earlier on yeah. when they were able to get it. The right wing wasn't able to get in as I was following that before the kill happened, The although she wasn't needed. But at the same time, 
when Echo was kind of able to engage on shot when it was that 3v3 and then became the 3v4 they were able to get that when they started that out they were actually able to get the kill on the shot so right now it just shows who can get the engage who can get the optimal engage and really just do what they need to do to get one of the members down and I think in the end we'll have to see how the ultimates really play out for Murloc geniuses they have you know really you know clutch ultimates if they can get that Uther into a good spot where he can get a good divine storm off you have the lightning breath that will come out just so much damage is coming out the starfall the water elemental lightning breath and the hinterland blast all in your choke point will just completely destroy someone except for maybe the vikings if they're in boat form yeah. but then again on the side of um bullets you've got quite a lot of defense you've got the etc who's pretty beefy You've got the Protective Shield on Brightwing and Blink Heals as well. You've also got Cleanse there as well to stop a, a stun chain coming in. And of course, Tassadar Shields. So it could be hard to take down or burst down one target should Shield stack uh, effectively. But other than that, if Valor can get a full strafe off and get a few Searing attacks off in there too, it could be pretty dangerous if, say, Jaina or Tarande or even Falstad gets called out on that front line. Yep, and... As it comes down, as we were talking about earlier, both teams just have such great team comps. And as you said, it's just really going to come down to see who can get off the ultimate gate, who can get off what they need, when they need it. If they, whatever team comes out, you know, just even a second ahead on that, we'll be able to take the team fight. And, but right now, looking into the way the situation is, we have the towers down on the first bottom keep which means that this keep is completely exposed. So the curse still has 51 seconds on it. It's a pretty long time. There's a lot of damage that can come out onto it. And if they lose this now, so early on to the game, that means that there's going to be so much pressure coming onto the bomb that they will have to consistently make sure that they're checking for that. And with only having Faye, who's able to use fly every so often, they're going to have to be careful because if they get caught out into a time where it's a 5v4 and they decide to bring Faye out, and too much pushes onto the bomb, they're going to lose a lot. Yeah, they, they really will. I mean, the situation we've got right now is that this keep could potentially go down. It will certainly get a lot of damage onto it. We have Corthon, Cattle, Mad Timmy, and Jaina coming down. Or Echo. Do they stay and fight this? They don't have... They only have two heroics up and one of them is a blink heal. Hmm. I mean, I, f I feel as if the bullets have to back away from this. When you look at um, Murlocs, they've got Hinterland Blast, they've got Lightning Breath, they've got Starfall. They could, in theory, yeah. keep on chasing this. And if they do, it will just completely turn the game around. So you have that level 13 talent. We'll be coming out in a second, though, so that... I'll have to see how that plays out into it also, but... Level 13 talent doesn't exactly amount to as much as the what the ultimates will do. As you said, the Hintelin Blast, basically almost every single damaging except for the Water Elemental will come out of this. And, you know, if you try to stay in fight, if you try to stay and tank that turret while you're taking a Lightning Breath, while you're taking a Starfall, while you take the Hintelin Blast, there's not going to be much left of you. And the chase potential coming out of the team of Murloc Genius is, you know, if they're able to even just catch out one of you, you're going to die. So they're, as you said, they're going to have to be really be careful. Hopefully Echo will be back in a little bit and we can see how this resumes. But looking at the rest of the map, we do have a little bit of push coming down the bottom from some sea shines, which will help out just a bit here. Um, won't allow too many more minions to make their way. But we do have what looks like to be only, yep, only one left of the bruiser camp. So that's not going to do too, too much, besides the fact that there might be a little bit of a stacking of these minions. And in the top lane, it is pushed a little bit in the favor of Murloc Geniuses. So they just, they have a lot of, you know, of it just go into this, you know, fight this out. Because they're not too far behind, they have their ultimates. Yep, as um, Echo taking his time now, just to get in here. The pulse functions, it's a great thing. Uh, the fact that we can just pause a game now and wait for players to connect, but they still need to fix the rejoin thing where the server is X ahead and so on and so forth. <laughs> it's a bit but of a it, under... <laughs> it, it, It's a step forward. They haven't yes. stepped back just yet. Um, but yeah, we do still have two maps 
uh, after this one should it go to the third one and I can tell you what they are now um, so we have cursed as the first map tomb of the spider queen as map number two Exciting. and should we need a third and final map it will go down to sky temple so two pretty good maps there we got lucky with those ones <laughs> just I love love casting Tomb of the Spider Queen just because the map is just in itself like Chris Hollows and Sky Temple just you know maps that you want to fight on. I do believe that Tomb of the Spider Queen is probably one of the maps that the whole entire game in itself really depends on how you team fight, um, what comps you really bring because you do so much fighting. The objectives themselves are a bit on the weak side, you know they're really nice for the pushing, but they have their set health. But they lose health even if you aren't attacking them. So eventually they will fall. And if you're able to make a good team fight against them and then really bring a team fight, team down, you know, you don't have to really worry about those infinite life pushing down without you going there to them. So can't wait to see what happens on that one. But of course, I really want to get back into this one. Hopefully, Echo will be able to restore his connection in a bit. Yeah, this is uh, an unfortunate wait. But hey ho, I've just messaged Faye to see if we can get an update on what's uh, what seems to be the problem. Apart from the fact that Echo can't connect. So uh, yeah, I mean I'm I'm one of the worst people to fill time. Um, no. <laughs> even, even when no. I've done CS and there's been DDoS, I am the worst. Echo's restored his connection. Hospital is asking for a status. Out. And lovely that he's saying that because his name is Hospital. Just yep. <laughs> funny oh thoughts going boy. through my head. Oh <laughs> Seems bugged. He's reloading one more time. Yep. Be a bit unfortunate. And seems like there might be some issues due to the what it looks like to see the loading into this and the pause function. Maybe they haven't exactly worked out too well with each other yet. Of course the pause function has just been, as you said, recently put into the game so there might be those, you know, little hidden bugs that may happen but hopefully everything will get put out straight away here. As you said before, if only, if only the rejoin was a bit cleaner, maybe this wouldn't be happening. But yep. one step at a time, it's yeah, the job we, we are still in beta. Yes. Um, of yeah, I remember. this game yeah. is only going to get better. Blizzard did yeah. some great things with the most recent patch. It is my favorite patch. Oh yes, um, to date. I mean, there wasn't too much to complain about before. I mean, a lot of the stuff that we're looking at now, in terms of these little errors, are you know stuff that only happens. You know, this may only happen in my custom game. Of course, the re the rejoin function is a little bit of a nuisance when you are playing in the Hero League or quick matches, but when it comes down to it, such a great game right now and so much fun. We're gonna unpot yeah, so they're gonna see if it's just is the pause screen that's gonna help them out. We're gonna go and get back into this so see what happens. Now, are we gonna see uh shot on the bullets just back away be nice I think we are, yeah. I can't really see them engaging upon this one. Nice gentlemanly agreement there. No solid engage, just back away and now rotate round. Seeing if Echo can get in, and it seems the answer is no, but I guess the best thing they can do is just keep on playing with Janabot. One level difference now after those forts and towers have gone down. It is still curse time as it now seems that it's going to be the first boss of the game getting taken by the bullets. Yep, and Pretty Jade trying to take out that well, just for a little bit of extra. Stuff, but Style not able points. to do it. Came out. Yep. You know, it's just a little bit of an annoyance when you might be bottom run there and be like, oh, well, now I have to go mid just to tap well. But they're going to go ahead and pick up this boss knowing that the Jaina is still not there. They're going to be able to get that. Echo has finally restored his connection. That Looks doesn't like he mean he's in the game. Be in the game soon, hopefully. Now he has to wait for the whole that you catch back yeah, up you to are the game. X behind. <laughs> Which. In itself lies to you so many times. <laughs> yep. But we see an aggressive move here coming out of the bullets. They do scout the boss of the red side. 
Now that they have four players here with Brightwing down bot, I believe Brightwing Supply should be available soon. Yep, it is in fact up right now. They could make a play here, they have just dropped a scouting drone from Skylol as Caterpillar and Jaina bot uh, trying to get some damage off and Jaina bot doing some work there. Forces the task to show and they decide to aggro the boss. Yep, and Faye just doing whatever she can. They go ahead and try to get this down, but with the help of Brightwing, this boss will be able to take down this keep, which means there will be a lot of pressure coming in from top the catapult. Lane. In we the top the Starfall lane. Lightning Breath. That's two kills going in the favor of the Murlocs. The boat has been popped in the back lane. Cawthorn Lux sprinting away. Front line, though, Hospital getting locked up. Yep, that. Water Elemental. Doesn't need his player to help it out. Did a lot, but Caterpillar might fall in the end. Oh, oh Faye just barely missing the Hinderland Blast. As Caterpillar tried to knock the member into it, just wasn't enough. Shot though, did use that dimensional shift, might be able to get out in the end here. They actually are probably should turn on the Protoges as Caterpillar. It looks like he was actually able to pick up a kill onto one of the Vikings, but Baylog says, I might revenge my fallen brother. Nope. The heal comes out. They're able to pick it up. They might get a kill on the Baylog. He used the sprint. Might be, nope, just not enough there in the end. But even with the Janabot, they're still able to get a pretty good engage there. Yeah, that was a two and a bit for one, I think. Maybe, mm -hmm. yeah, two and a bit for one. So pretty nice fight there. Janabot didn't really step a foot out of line. Played it very safe from the back line. Props to her. Cawthorn Luck and Jane are now going to be taking out this Bruiser camp just so they've got some pressure in this mid lane. Skylow seeking out the boss, drops a drone down and then just falls back. Tribute is in the bot lane again. This isn't really needed. We might just see the uh, red side go up and grab this boss, but they will get scouted out by this drone. Yep, yeah. Echo's gonna have to be careful. The Shane bot's playing a pretty mean game. They might look for it to next one if he can't get back in. But Skylow is gonna might be caught out here as we do have four members of Murloc Geniuses. They're just gonna go ahead and zone them away and not do too much. But the tribute has spawned and they are honking at me, even though the door is open. I said that. But they're honking at me. I'm sorry about that everyone. Janabot is gonna get caught out right here. They're taking a lot of damage from that straight. They're gonna be able to pick up one kill. Kathan Lux is gonna have to pop that sprint to make sure that they do get out in time. Caterpillar though, trying to do his best to get out, is gonna end up falling too. Also, he does have that passive up, so he will be able to come out in the next couple of seconds. But this fort will fall. And I'm sorry everyone, I will be right back. That's fine. Skylo is gonna be uh, pushing down this one with the ETC. We still have Faye in the bot lane. Just providing some pressure here. It is only uh, Jaina that fell. It's not the greatest of deals. They can, of course, de-push this, but it's whether or not the side of shot do engage on the boss, and it looks like they are going to. Faye does still have fly available if they want to go and contest this. Protege does get snared up. That could mean they go onto it. Cleanse has been used. Skylo going in. Cawthorn Luck going to get taken down, as is Caterpillar. Cawthorn Luck is actually forced away from this one. Caterpillar gets Polymorph into a monkey. But is going to survive. It's Tribute again here. Going to be the second one of this round for Shot and the Bullets. And it's going to be Shot himself to grab this. But every cloud has a silver lining. They did back away from the boss, luckily, for Murlocs. Across the map, looks we, like, yeah. yeah. Both teams are equal up on the top, though. They're going to try to get some damage onto that. The Jaina bot, unfortunately, showing her botness right there. Throwing down the water elemental straight onto them. That's not going to be up for the next fight, unfortunately, for them. And right now, looks like Murloc Genius is just trying to make the best out of a bad situation. Unfortunately, Echo probably trying to do his best to join in, but just not having any luck right now. Both teams going back and forth, but the shot and the bullets are two out of three. Further tributes, they will have to make sure that they can do their best to hopefully delay this game as much as possible if Echo is trying to get back in. Yep, as it's another tribute here, and again, you can't really think that the Murlocs are going to go for this one here. Because they are, of course, a man down, but this will give the curse over, and we might see shot on the bullets decide to push for the win, or at least grab the boss and then push behind it here. Mad Timmy and Caterpillar are here. They might just try and stop shot here from range. Skyl, although he can jump in, they're going to go on to shot, and there's the stage dive. Yep, a lot of damage going on every time. He has to pop that jump early, but Janabot is going to be the first one to be taken out. Hospital has to get healed up before. She falls, Caterpillar trying to be that tanky front line, but with only about 600 health left, it's going to have to be careful. Mad Timmy will really be the next one to fall. 
with Caterpillar falling and Cathon Luck, it will be a five sweep for the side of Shot in the Bullets. And right now, all they have to do is just looks like they're going to go pick up these Siege Giants and win the game. They or don't even care for Siege Giants. Yep. They're just going to go win. 30 yep. second death timers. They're going to go straight for this core here. Skylo going to be the first one there, tanking it up. Tassler shield on him. Of course, he has the Echo Pedal as well. Oh, not the Echo Pedal, Guitar Solo, sorry. As uh, This is going to be game one. Going over to the side of Shot and the Bullets. Taking the 1-0 lead up against Murloc Geniuses. This map was Murloc Geniuses' map choice. But, of course, this... Um, it's not the best way to win, they do apologise. Shot says it's lame, Echo DC in. It's not the best, but, of course, luckily for them, this is the final and there are still two maps that they can fight for. Yep. And, yeah, as you said, it's just really close game when it came down to it before the DC really back and forth and was really hoping he would come back to see how the rest of the game would play out. But, you know, good job. Two shot in the bullets are able to take this first one. We'll have to see what goes on in the second one. Yep, so guys, we're going to take a very short break again while we get this second game set up and of course the draft sorted as well. So stay tuned, we'll see you in about one or two minutes.